Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob Deco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at the Topps Modern Gladius in Knife Life News. We're going to take a look at the Vandrare Knives Fenrir in real life, and then we go over the 10 best appendix carry fixed blade knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was on my Cold Steel Mini Tack Kiridashi short. Uh, and Leon said, I've been looking for one uh, i'm sorry i've been looking for one since forever they are pretty rare nowadays thank you for the upload and i appreciated that a i like positive comments almost all of them are positive but i like this because that's part of what this channel is about it's not necessarily about the the newest and trendiest uh, as you know <laughs> from your uh from your humble host i am not the newest and trendiest person out there so uh i do relish some of the older things in my collections uh my collection and especially some of those things that you can't get anymore so happy that that was recognized that's this knife here the kiridashi mini tack and this is from about 2006 when andrew demko joined cold steel and uh, that's when they re-released the Voyager in its current state and came out with a bunch of other knives. And this was one of them, a series of these. And now I got another one from this series from Dave, this old sword blade reviews in a big box he sent uh, as a donation to the channel for giveaway knives. And I'm going to be showing that off later. Uh, but Leon, thanks for the comment. Uh, Leon and everyone else, uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, love your comments. Uh, okay, so all that being said, I think it's time to get to a pocket check. Today, I had on me uh, one of the first expensive folders I ever got, and that is the Spyderco Uliza. Uliza, designed by Ulrich. Henneke of Germany, and he is a former police officer in Germany turned knife maker. And he's responsible for the very famous and popular Kaiser T1 uh, and several other uh, folders out there on the market. But this was the first place I heard of him. And when this knife came out, I don't remember the year, maybe 2013, something like that. I remember seeing it and being gobsmacked, thinking that is a folder that I have designed. It looks like a recurved Filipino sword uh, for the pocket. And uh, indeed it, it is that, just that. That's VG10, that's uh, four and a quarter inches or 4.1 inches um, of hollow ground recurved VG10 uh, on a back lock. This is a Taiwan um, production here. I'm sorry, Seki City, Japan. Uh, production here and uh, just a really cool knife. And at one point I was looking to get rid of it. I'm glad I never did. I paid, um, I remember 174 bucks for this and that was by far the most I'd ever spent on a folder. So anyway, been a long time since I've carried this, which is loosely affiliated with the police line, uh, though not an official member of the Spyderco police line, but it's the same size and designed by and for uh, police. Just from Germany. Uh, so that in my front right pocket, in my, uh, well, it floats around from front left to front right to back front or to back left. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's my slip joint today. And it's the um, Jack Wolf Knives, Big Bro Jack. And look at that. Uh, it is a large boys knife. It's that sleeve board pattern handle very very neutral and in this case pretty large fits the hand very nicely and then you have a clip point blade uh, much like a number 15 boys knife from gec except this one is a little bit larger uh, this is the companion piece the brother piece the big bro you might say to the little bro uh, the third release from jack wolf knives that uh, didn't didn't see full release due to a blade wrap issue. Uh, I was one of the lucky ones to receive mine 
And no, I did not send it back. I just sharpened through the blade wrap. And not everyone had it. Blade wrap is when on a, a slip joint knife, when you're closing it, the blade overshoots uh, the, the spring and, and hits into and the edge, hits into uh, part of the spring and makes a little ding. So <laughs> that, that rhymed. Uh, so here I have uh, the last of the Jack Wolf knives in micarta. The big bro in its black canvas micarta is the last of the um, micarta. They're really going gangbusters with the camo carbon and the fat carbon. So that's what he's sticking with. Thank you, Ben, for sending me the last of the micarta Jack Wolf knives. At least for now, that is. Uh, fixed blade today was not uh, appendix carry, which is my new style of carry. And I'm very happy with it. And, and I'll explain with knife today. And uh, that is the Murray Carter perfect neck knife. I think it's called the perfect neck knife. Uh, if it's not, it should be. Uh, here's the sheath, really excellent sheath. Uh, fully riveted, so you have one option, and that is to carry it as a neck knife, unless you make another sheath for it. But here is the knife given to me off the neck of Murray Carter. Uh, this is one made by him. Now, he's got a shop uh, called Carter Custom Cutlery, and in that shop, he's got a bunch of apprentices to whom he teaches uh, this 720-year-old uh, way of making knives that he learned in his 18 years in Japan as a um, village knife maker and blacksmith. Um, look at this beautiful, beautiful knife. He sent it to me as a gift for quote unquote, all I do for the knife uh, community. And I thought that was super cool. <laughs> uh, really nice handle and really comfortable in hand. And this choil here acts as a, a, a sort of, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, sub hilt and really keeps this blade nicely in hand nice and light and that the contouring on the handle is just perfect it's very organic feels like something god made it's very very nice uh so that i had that around my neck uh not something ordinary you know you don't see me carry that too often uh it is fancy it is expensive it is uh, you know a pretty precious uh, knife there but uh it was great plus if it fell out which it wasn't going to that sheath is awesome but it would be inside my shirt cuz it was tucked in i know a lot of you bash on me for tucking in my shirt got to do what i got to do um but at least it would be caught in there wouldn't that be nice to have a razor sharp blade just just inside your shirt there rattling around just as long as you don't lose it. Okay, last up, one of the OGs of the um, emotional support knife. Uh, this is the Rat 2. This one given to me by my daughter, uh, my older daughter, before my younger daughter was even born. It was, I want to get daddy a pink knife. And uh, my wife got me this. Uh, in her name, this is the Rat 2. This is the, uh, the Aus 8 version. Love this knife here. Uh, really incredible action on this knife on the washers, just rockets out like nobody's business and um, really great, just a great knife altogether. We call this one Pinky Tuscadero due to the, the pink skirt and the black leather jacket. I mean, the black blade and the pink, uh, pink handle. And then I got that sort of noose type knot. I love that knot. Not sure what it's called. We'll call it a hangman's knot because that sounds cool and old timey uh, as a fob on there. Just a great knife. This was one of the original emotional support knives. I've had this one a long time. All right. That's what I had in my pocket. The Spyderco Uliza was uh, main stage. And then I had uh, for my slip joint, the little, I mean, the big bro from Jack Wolf knives, awesome knife. And then I had the neck knife from Murray Carter hanging around my neck today. And then for emotional support in my back left pocket, I had the rat model too in Aus 8. What were you carrying? Let me know. Always uh, a pleasure to find out what you all are carrying, you classy, classy group of people. Speaking of class, uh, Dave, this old sword blade reviews, as I have mentioned, uh, if you don't watch his channel, you need to. He's got an incredible collection, a great taste, 
and uh, an awesome presentation. The man's a, a wonderful photographer. It comes through on his videos. Anyway, he's given a lot of knives to this channel that we've given away. Uh, this one we're giving away as the um, r random giveaway knife tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives. Uh, that is uh, the Q QSP Locust. This thing is a really cool knife. If you look at it, it resembles a locust. Uh, this has been on before. Uh, this was one of the unclaimed, uh, this is an unclaimed giveaway knife, actually. This was given away once and uh, unclaimed. So it's going back out. It's been, it's been months. Uh, but that is about a four inch VG10 Warncliffe blade uh, on that very locust looking uh, micarta handle it feels great in hand but also looks very cool uh, is really good in the reverse grip if you're using it defensively and really really good in the reverse pical grip uh, that sort of curve fits the palm perfectly angles that blade out just how you would want it but really you're going to carry this as an edc knife and it is a classy and very nice looking edc knife with that um blue anodized titanium sculpted clip and the body that just looks kind of locust like so we're going to be giving this away tomorrow night on thursday night knives by the way amazing action on this as you would expect from qsp look i even look like a rock star with the left hand that means it's really good action uh and i like the two-tone blade not for nothing so this could be yours. Just join us on Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. You can also catch us on Facebook and Twitch at the same time. And you can also comment from those platforms as well. And commenting is how you win this. Uh, it will be hashtag knife. And that will that will possibly win you that very cool QSP locust. Okay, still to come on. Uh, the Knife Junkie podcast. We're going to take a look at Knife Life News and then a couple of uh, loners here from Dave and one new knife from me, uh, all right here. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife, and we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit the knifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I want literally everything that was in that knife ship free liner. Everything, everything. The one that really caught my eye was the RMJ Talon. Man, I think it's time for a new tomahawk up in here. Uh, but that's another issue. Uh, Knife Life News. Let's talk about a new Kaiser. You know, they do this uh, Friday, uh, Kaiser Friday Club, where they release a, uh, a, a Kaiser model, but done up in fancy garb. Uh, this time, it's the Kaiser Feist by Justin Lundquist, one of their most successful knives and one of the first real popular front flippers. Uh, in this case, it's getting the dragon treatment. So they are sculpting the uh, the feist here to look like a dragon. You, you can see up towards the top of the handle uh, where the pivot is. It's that black uh, scaly uh, texture, and then that turns into red, a red texture um, with the scales and the wings, I guess those look uh, like wings there. And uh, this one will have a drop point blade uh, like the one that was released in 2017. Uh, those are the uh, 154CM uh, blades that, you know, really launched this. They came out with the, um, with the Warncliffe blade and they did a Friday Kaiser, a Kaiser Friday club with it. Uh, Star Wars themed uh, recently. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure what you think of the 3D sculpting here, um, but, I, you know, it's actually not my bag. This is a little bit mall ninja to me. This is a little bit, uh, as people like to say, um, gas station knife like, and that's fine. And and sculpting things and making them look like other things 
like Reich knives does some really beautifully uh, sculpted knives that are supposed to look like insects and other things. And I, I appreciate the skill uh, that goes into making them, but they're just not my taste. Any for, anyway, 154 CM on this one. Check it out, especially if you're a Kaiser collector or a Feist collector. There have been so many different models of that. I could see it being a collectible at this point. All right, next up, Topps Knives. They have their new Modern Gladius coming out. Now, this is an angular combat dagger. And I was quipping on Thursday Night Knives that uh, if it were up to me, I would change some of the angles slightly to make it more Gladius-like. For instance, I would not have it taper to a narrower, um, to a narrower distance uh, at the sub-tip there. I would have it do the opposite. I would have it be thinner down towards the Ricasso and widen out. Uh, but to me, that would make it look more like a Gladius. But still, I appreciate that they're making this a very cool angular combat dagger. To me, it's like two Americanized Tontos uh, just sort of plopped on top of each other. So you get those sub tips. You get a wicked triangular uh, thrusting tip, and then you get two straight and very useful edges. And we know how great straight edges are for uh, both combat and utility. And this one, uh, to me, is combat knife all day long uh, with its 1095 black traction coating and uh, micarta setup that Tops usually does. Also, it's got those double quillions and the double edge. To me, it's combat all day long, but they have it in a sheath that's got a dangler. So I think they're trying to either give you options or say, hey, you know, Gladius daggers are not just for combat. You can use this for the outdoors as well. And uh, I don't know. I think it's a, I, I think it would benefit from a different clip, uh, but I would like to get this thing and uh, have it and hold it. Uh, available at the Tops website and something, I, I thought I remembered hearing that it was also going to be available from Smoky Mountain Knifeworks only. Uh, besides tops. So check it out. Promises to be pretty darn cool. All right. Next up is uh, this one, the Jack Wolf knives, uh, big bro Jack. So just an official announcement that this came out uh, last Friday. Uh, that was the 14th, I believe uh, of, of April, 2023 uh, Jack Wolf knives is the big bro Jack. Look at these four beautiful carbon fibers. Plus that micarta. Um, the carbon fiber I, on the very top, I like the best. It reminds me of a burl wood. That's some sort of copper, uh, micarta. But so here we have, uh, the, the usual recipe for Jack Wolf knives, which, um, you know, that might sound, uh, that might sound uh, boring, but it's not, it is the Jack Wolf knives recipe. So you have a beautiful, uh, integrated frame of, uh, titanium, uh, so each side is uh, a piece of titanium carved out uh, with that pocket for the cover and the fluting and all of that. And those two are, are put together in a perfect seamless package with amazing walk and talk. And in this case, five different cover uh, options, one of them being micarta for the last time. And that's what I have here. Black canvas micarta. The blades, almost three inches. Uh, really, really nice full height hollow ground S90V for the fourth time, I believe. Uh, it's changing over from that M390. Absolutely loving mine. Um, it has gotten uh, serious duty um, as a food knife. Also, uh, this one I, I made a short of last week and it got immediately, it got uh, several thousand views, which was pretty cool. People cannot get enough of their Jack Wolf knives. Now, which one of those do you like of the carbon fiber? Um, I keep looking at them and, and I'm thinking in my future, you know, I'm going to, when he starts doing a second run and uh, is probably going to change his marketing, uh, I would imagine and when, when things are well in line and I will be buying my Jack Wolf knives, I will be buying them in carbon fiber because that's how they will be coming. Uh, and I keep seeing that one in the middle too. Uh, the one on top, I said, looks like burl wood I like, but that one in the middle, I know that's the very popular one, the red, white, and blue. And somehow that's uh, that's calling to me too, but I'm just a Yankee doodle dandy. All right, 
that's Jack Wolf Knives. Very, very excited to see that large sleeve board clip point boys knife style. Classic American jackknife coming out from them. Okay. Uh, wanted to talk about three makers inducted into the cutlery hall of fame. Uh, this is a hall of fame started by blade magazine. Um, and we know them for blade show, uh, blade magazine, just in there, like leading the way for a long time in the knife world. So the three that they have, uh, they're inducting, uh, this year, Bob Terzuola, we know him as the godfather or grandfather, if you want to call him that of tactical folders. Uh, his work is so incredible and for so long, quite exclusive, excuse me, in the last few years, he's done uh, many more designs that have gone further and wider uh, in terms of his production stuff. Um, he had a couple of things later, a couple of earlier on, but focused on getting his stuff into more hands. And I really, really appreciate that. Uh, beautiful knife and his his book also he's known for his book the tactical knife a study of the anatomy and construction of the liner lock folder which i love uh he re-released that a couple of years ago uh next up devin thomas uh who is known for his damasteel uh, patterns he is also being um uh, inducted into the Cutlery Hall of Fame. And then lastly, Steve Schwartzer is a uh, uh, the longest serving master smith in the American Bladesmith Society, Steve Schwartzer. So he is also uh, known for his specialized uh, Damascus, uh, mosaic Damascus patterns. And uh, so he is being inducted as well. Uh, cool to see, uh, just like any other industry or um, area of enthusiasm that there is a hall of fame and it's good to see some names that we know and some we might not be familiar with but being recognized for their contributions uh okay and last up uh from uh, uh from um knife uh geez, oh man from knife rights my apologies uh from nebraska and knife rights uh knife rights supported the nebraska constitutional carry bill uh, uh, number 77, uh, LB 77, which includes knives and preemption, which is important, was passed by a bipartisan 33 to 14 vote in Nebraska's uh, unicameral legislator. It now moves on to Governor Jim Pillen for his action, which I assume is signing the bill. Uh, that would be great uh, constitutional carry, but uh, also I love the idea of... Uh, well, constitutional carry, I, I love that idea, um, but uh, preemption. So that <clears throat> from from municipality to municipality, you can't be busted. It makes the knife law um, consistent across the whole state. Uh, in, in states without preemption, uh, you can go from one county to the next and be breaking the law suddenly. So I, I think that this is important. Uh, and we hear about this, it's less splashy than some of the legislations uh, that we hear knife rights fighting for and winning, uh, but those preemption bills are really uh, awesome and useful, especially to people like us who are movers and shakers and also knife lovers. So more and more good work from um, knife rights, as always, uh, Doug Ritter, support Doug Ritter by either going, or knife rights and Doug Ritter by either going to knife rights and uh, contributing there, or go to um, uh, but get one of his knives, one of the Ritter Hogue knives. Those are our um, are exclusives, so you have to get them at, um, oh, where are they? Well, you can find them. Just Google it, uh, the RSK Mark I from Ritter. You buy those, that helps keep food on his table so that he can keep up the good fight. All right, coming up right after this, uh, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. But first, I want to say if you like this show and you want to help support it, you can do so on Patreon. Uh, you can scan the QR code there uh, and um, or you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can win knives like this month. Uh, the a lucky gentleman junkie won these two uh, version one and version two of the uh, Viper from Off Grid Knives. So uh, chances to win plus exclusive 
uh, extras from interviews and other stuff. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So new to me is, and new to the world, I should say, uh, is a knife from Ethan Curtis of Vandrare Knives. Uh, We spoke with him on the podcast recently. Uh, This is his Fenrir. This is his favorite knife of his and uh, the one that he carries most consistently. So I got one of these from him and I uh, just want to show it in the sheath. I've been, I've been carrying this. Uh, this does not make the lineup coming up just cause I have not had it long enough, and, but I've carried it a few times uh, with the debt cord, uh, which I think I'm going to continue with. So I keep this uh, nestled in my uh, front waistband and then have the end of the cord uh, wrapped around my belt. So when I pull it and tug it out, it leaves the sheath and I have the knife in hand. So here it is. It is a worn cliff and uh, it's got really good ergonomics, especially in that reverse grip. Uh, it's wicked sharp. It's got a slight downward uh, tilt to that edge. And yeah, it is a self-defense knife. It is a slasher and a thruster. Um, and as we look around, there are some areas that are a little rough around the edges. Uh, but he has not been making knives for too long. Um, but uh, it is a very, uh, like I said, it just, it fits my hand perfectly. Melts in the hand and then it it lives up to that, uh, that self-defense um, mission that, that I carry it for and that it's made for. He's been doing this with that blade reversed and making it a, 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 um, uh, what do you call it? Pecal, look, which looks very interesting. Uh, I got this special sort of black and red swirled uh, marbled G10 on this one. And uh, yes, there we go. So that is the Fenrir um, from Vandrer Knives. And when I draw it, so this is how I've been carrying it. Let me see if I can do this right here. So that has been sitting uh, in the waist and this connected around the side and I can just grab it from my, from my waistband like this and tug it out and I have it right in hand. A uh, great defensive knife is the Fenrir. <laughs> it's hard for me to say. My, uh, so it's the Fenrir from Vandrer Knives. I am not a Viking. This is how all the Vikings talk on the show, Vikings, which I love. It's a great show. Uh, but I am not of their extraction. Okay, next up is from Cold Steel. Now, this one is a loner from Dave, This Old Sword Reviews. And as you may or may not know, when he sends me these big boxes of knives to give away, I always end up kind of adopting one. And uh, I think that this is the one I have to adopt uh, because it is a very hard to come by. This is the one that was being commented. Oh, no, not this one. Uh, but but one in the uh, Kiridashi in this line. This is the mini tack Skinner. And to me, it is always, I never had this, but this was one that I always wanted to buy. Um, and it, it looks like all of the wicked parts of a Bowie uh, without any of the extra. So you got a really deep, long clip, and then you have, uh, it's not a trailing point. It is sort of a straight, I mean, the point, is center line and it is on the upward trajectory but you see the way it's clipped off at the tip uh so that it it's not a fragile tip even though it's very thin and hollow ground uh this is set up for neck knife carry uh but is just screaming for just being dropped in the pocket and uh with a little cord around your uh, around a belt loop and you pull it out and boom you got this knife in hand i love that sub hilt design um 
really, really holds that knife in hand. It's like a trigger or a, um, you know, just some sort of a keep there. And it's also stopping you from running up onto that blade in a thrust. Uh, this, of course, was uh, marketed as a utility knife. Um, you know, these this whole mini tack series, they still make the Tonto and, a, and the Clip Point, which was a later edition. They got rid of the beaver tail, which had a really broad blade and something else. can't remember which one. I guess maybe this one. Uh, they marketed as useful hunters' knives and, and just utility knives, but excellent, excellent, wicked little, little weapony type knife. So that is the mini tack uh, Skinner. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. And then last up, also on loan from Dave, uh, or, or on its making a stop here before it goes out to some lucky giveaway winner is the Talon by Doug Markaida and uh, 511 Tactical. So it comes in this uh, uh, inject molded sheath and it is indeed a beautiful little karambit here. Uh, really nice shape, great uh, placement of that ring uh, to keep in your hand and maintain a fist without uh, changing the angle of your hand and doing anything crazy like that. Uh, I love the forward angle of that blade uh, for that sort of raking motion uh, that you would be doing with a um, with a karambit. And then say you flip it around like this, you've got a great angle for pull cuts and all sorts of, uh, well, slashing and such. Uh, also fits great in the hand in a traditional grip like this, and you can opt to use that ring or not. Either way, it's very comfortable because of how the ring was placed outboard from the handle. That is important in any sort of ringed knife that the ring does not come at the very top of the handle, but comes forward so that it can follow your natural uh, knuckle alignment. And this one does that great. Here, I'll show you here in this camera with that fist. That fist, which is my fist, uh, but you make a fist and 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 everything stays aligned. So you could hit with those knuckles. By the way, if you did, if you held this just in a boxing stance like this and you hit uh, without even trying to hit with that blade, you know, something horrible is going to happen with it. So uh, a great design. Uh, the thing I don't like about this are these cheap plastic uh, smoked clear plastic handles. Uh, if this were mine, I might consider uh, doing, a, you know, making scales for it myself. Since it's not going on a folder, it's not so complex. I think I could do that. Very beautiful knife. They also did a uh, folding version of that that waved open with this little piece right here. Very, very nice. Doug Mark has his karambits and such. He is a actually another one of his designs, a collaboration is in this here lineup now. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about appendix carry knives. Ever since having uh, Ethan Curtis of Vandra Knives, who made this on the show, I've been reconsidering my carry, which has always been my fixed blade carry, which has been in the waistband at three o'clock. And I pull it out, you know, with the tip down and the edge out, you know, forward, and I draw it in this reverse grip, or it's very easy to and and handy to turn your hand around like this with your knuckles against your body and draw it, and then you have it in standard grip. That's actually an easier way of drawing it than having the knife oriented the other way with the edge back and reaching up like this. Uh, it's just easier to, especially the bigger the knife gets. Uh, so I have um, reconsidered where I keep it because if I'm using that knife for defensive purposes, chances are um, well, I, I will have better access to it if it's on the front of my body because I'll be able to reach it with my left hand or my right hand. Whereas if it's way over on my uh, three o'clock on my right hand side and I fall on that side, I won't have access to that. Um, and you say, what if you fall on your face? Well, th there is that. But oftentimes your hands are in front of you. Uh, it might be easier to get at that knife. So, you know, these are the kind of things I think of this is not my life. I'm not out there. I'm not an assassin. I'm not a spy. I am not in law enforcement or in the military. And I am not getting in 
tussles and getting thrown to the ground and having to access my fixed blade knife. But if I were, uh, I'd be ready for it more in appendix carry. So it's been important to me figuring out how I wear knives on the front of me. And in some cases, it appendix carry is with a cord like this. And in one case, it's actually, or two cases, it's actually on the belt in scout carry in the front. Uh, so I've been going through, cycling through all of my mid-sized and small fixed blade knives to figure out what I like to carry the best. And, uh, well, I have a pretty decent list here. And the first one is, you might have guessed it. Yes, it is the Nova one. It is the, the Nova one and the EDC Tonto. So this, these are my hog tooth knives. Uh, it started with this knife right here, the EDC Tonto. And I've been carrying this for several years. It is an amazing knife, uh, a great cutter, hollow ground, uh, very thin. Uh, one and uh, I love it so much. I asked to do a collaboration with uh, Matt Chase of Hog Tooth Knives to make a Bowie version of it and uh, co-brand it. And we called it the Nova One. And uh, th those are in the works now. And we're going to later be doing uh, a different blade shape. But the reason I I requested that uh, collaboration with him is because this is the perfect platform, perfect size for carry. Uh, at the time, perfect size for my three o'clock carry. Well, as it turns out, it's perfect for appendix carry. Um, I think that's important in in either style of carry is the rounded nature of the pommel short and round means that when it's in the waistband it's not going to poke into my ribs interfere with my love head. those have shrunk happily i've been working on that people uh so not not so much interference there but um also it's got to fit into the seam uh of your leg you know where, where your leg meets your body uh, because you're going to be sitting and you're going to be in the car. That's that's another thing. All of these knives in this list are good for sitting for extended periods of time and for even having a seatbelt uh, across them. Uh, and that was always my big um, hesitation with appendix carry anything, whether it's a firearm or a knife. Um, so, yeah, this uh, EDC Tonto from Hogtooth Knives and, of course, my Nova One, which is based on this platform, is perfect for appendix carry. Uh, also, that thing I was showing you about turning your, your hand around to, to pull it out, uh, the way I carry it, it's perfect for just grabbing like this and having in reverse grip. Or if you simply turn your hand around, you can draw it out and have it ready in standard grip. So hog tooth knives, EDC Tonto, black Nova one at the top. All right, next up, uh, JB Knife and Tool. Uh, this one is an awesome appendix carry. And an another thing uh, that you'll see in the knife, knife I had there and the other knives you'll see is that curve of the handle works well for the curve of one's belly, especially those of us male type people who develop bellies whether or not we want them. Uh, so having that curve to accommodate your curve is, is a nice thing incidentally uh you'll notice all of these pretty much or most of these have the discrete carry clips on them discrete carry concepts clip because i like to clip to the pants it themselves underneath the belt not the belt uh because i like to position it at certain angles that uh if you were to go over the belt you, you couldn't do without totally re-angling the clip itself all right so the jb knives ditch clip is definitely a defensive knife. You look at it, it's like those defensive people you know, who is like, what, what are you looking at? Like, it's got a curved blade, sharp on both sides, black and then shiny uh, with that Texas star and that perfect handle um, for gripping and reverse grip and just uh, going to town with. So a, a very defensive knife. This would be a hard one to justify carrying I carry it for work, uh, you know, cutting carpet. Yeah, no, you don't. Uh, though these are very, very capable. This is, I can't remember the steel this is, uh, but in speaking with um, 
Jason of JB Knife and Tool, they do a lot of uh, abusive testing to this very thin steel. That's a 16th of an inch thin, and that is because this is a ditch model. Uh, JB Knife and Tool does their models in a eighth of an inch and then a 16th of an inch. And the 16 inch models they call their ditch models. So nice and thin, but this uh, size is perfect. Now, size. Uh, is kind of maxing out at eight inches overall. Uh, eight inches, uh, a lot of these are seven and a half inches uh, stem to stern here. And uh, with the curve, that's nice. Uh, too much more than that, and then sitting down is going to be painful. You're going to have a sheath poking into, into, your, uh, you know, into your genitals, and it will not be pleasant. Uh, so ditch pick. Next up is the... Um, this is the largest of them uh, that I carry in in the waistband appendix. And this is from 1558 uh, Knife Company. That is Josh Fisher, Master Bladesmith, jo Josh Fisher's production line or, or mid-tech line, I guess you would call it. I think he has these water jetted and that does everything else uh, with the 52100 blade steel. Uh, this is a gorgeous recurve clip point blade and um, has a nice, generous handle, uh, and yet is very comfortable for in the waistband, uh, or uh, yet for appendix in the waistband carry, even though that handle is a little bit longer than say the Nova One. Um, it, it fits perfectly on the contour, and these none of these really print much under the shirt. And if they do, it's when you're bending or turning a certain way, and then maybe the handle will poke up a little bit. But no one is really thinking uh, this guy's got a fixed blade knife in his waistband. I, I, I don't think. I don't. I can't tell what everyone is thinking. But I, I just don't think people think that first. They might think gun or they might just think, oh, he's got a weird bony protrusion, you know, coming out. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this one's got a nice Coke uh, bottle handle in... in uh, cross section here and it flares out towards the the end just a masterfully made knife it's no uh wonder that he is a master bladesmith and uh not for nothing his daughter who is in her young teens uh became a uh what do you call it uh a journeyman smith at last year's blade show and uh so did matt chase of hogtooth knives and i remember him saying like i'm almost 50 and she's like 14 <laughs> so uh must run in the family there all right next up this was a gift from my brother-in-law uh, i always talk about how my brother has given me a lot of great knives well so has my brother-in-law and uh this one i've been wearing carrying a lot and uh, that is the waksahashi uh from Senkut. now this one is the only one um, that I'm using the IWB uh, uh, straps here to carry scout style. I carry one other stout style, and that's after this, uh, but I carry it in a different fashion. But the, the double straps here keep it nice and close to the body. It is a very thin knife. Now, this is right up front, like right on the front part of my body. So what I'll do is take my belt, um, what's that thing called? Buckle, <laughs> and slide it over. And then strap this right up front. On occasion, I will straddle the belt loop on the front left with this. But then I find that the handle kind of comes off from my body at an angle like this. I like it not to print at all. Of course, I'm uh, blouse, uh, not blousing, but uh, uh, I have a shirt or sweater or something like that over these at all times so that they're not showing. Uh, but this Waksahashi is awesome. The teeth is great. And the blade is awesome. What is this? Uh, uh, 9CR18 MOV. You got that beautiful clip point. I love the shape of that clip point. It reminds me of the Civivi Cogent, the first button lock that they did. I had that one. I think I gave that one to my brother. Uh, nice neutral handle on this uh, with the lightning holes. And that's not lightning like that comes from the sky. That's lightning like to make it lighter. But also you can manipulate it, maybe not with your left hand. Uh, but with your right, <laughs> great jimping up the spine. Uh, this would make an excellent uh, self-defense knife uh, for all the reasons just mentioned. And really, really good in reverse grip. 
uh, that neutral handle with that uh, with that sort of neutral pommel is great for capping with the thumb. And then, of course, you've got the swedge. Great knife. This one I keep putting off, but I'm going to uh, make that handle maroon. I'm going to make this knife a little bit more special. I have the writ die over there to do so. I just haven't done it yet. Have never done that. Uh, have never done a writ die job. All right. Next up, I also carry scout style uh, on the front. Um, so I can access it in reverse grip with my left hand or standard grip with my right and that is my t -Kel Knives Guardian. Now, something that t -Kel prides himself on, Tim Kell prides himself on, is the thinness of his sheaths. And this one is indeed thin. He uh, does this in his own sort of patented way. And uh, the sheath is about as wide as a belt. And then he um, supplies you with an in-the-waistband uh, horizontal belt clip there. And now he does a special uh, collaboration with Discrete Carry Concepts uh, to do a uh, wider clip like this, which is going to be coming on a knife uh, that he is sending me shortly. So I look forward to checking out that clip. Um, this plastic one is good, but I look forward to the metal one even more. Now, this one is a triple-edged worn cliff. And it is all about self-defense. It is all about self-defense. Look at that very, very wicked blade tip. Um, and you see three edges there, one here, one here, and one here and on the top. And just wicked and nasty. And you can see uh, the handle is purple and black. You can get t -Kel knives in a whole bunch of different um, G10s and some micartas, but this one is also wearing the sentry grip. You see the ring on that? Well, that ring is integral to the scale on the backside. The scale on the backside is a sentry grip. That's an aftermarket thing you get from him uh, for 30 bucks, I think, and that is one piece of G10 that cantilevers over the, the pommel there and puts the ring in the center lined up with the tang of the blade. Uh, if you want to turn your guardian or striker or several others that have the same handle into a karambity type item. And while I have it oriented like this, look at that nasty point. This is for making big wide wounds that are difficult to close and painful. Uh, this is a 100% last ditch self-defense life-saving knife here. This is not for cutting cheese or for shaving arm hair or for slicing paper. Though, if you do it at the right angle, you can do all of those things with this knife. The t -Kel Knives Guardian, that also has that nickel boron coating. Uh, this is ADCRV2 blade steel with nickel boron coating. That nickel boron coating is used a lot in firearms and it makes things slick. It makes metal really, really slick. So this thing uh, is, is meant, as they used to say, built for speed. This thing is built for speed. Love it. All right, next up is one of the newer ones that I've uh, just started wearing appendix carry. And in that, uh, I've been carrying this around a lot. And that is the Cold Steel Counterattack 2. This is the smaller one. The counterattack one is the larger five-inch bladed dagger. Uh, but this is a hollow ground, chisel ground dagger, meaning uh, this side has those very steep bevels that are flat ground. You turn it over, and it's spooned out. So that's a chisel grind, but it's convex right there, or concave. <laughs> I always get that wrong. Uh, just a nasty little knife. Uh, really great around the neck. It's so light and so thin and uh you know but you still have your coke bottle uh type handle that's very easy to grip uh, so i've always had this kind of in my bag or around my neck and i realized recently if i do that thing where i tie the end of the of the sheath cable to my belt at, at nine o'clock and then just put it in my waistband at 12 o'clock with the with the 550 cord tracing in my belt line uh, from 9 to 12. It's a great little forget you had uh, in the waistband fix, fixed blade carry. And it's really hard to see and detect. And it stays in place due to that rubbery style handle. 
And then when you need it, man, it's right there. It's in reverse grip for your left hand or it's in uh, forward grip for your right hand. And uh, this, I, I've i been using this when I mow the lawn because uh, I want, uh, I always have something large and capable uh, like one of the Voyager XLs in my pocket if I need to do any light chopping. But just in case someone runs up on me while I'm mowing the lawn Rand, Rand Paul style, I'll have this in my waistband uh, to defend myself. So uh, I like I like that setup quite a bit. So this is a nice little uh, scout style front carry in the waistband um, cord carry. Um, and I imagine it's big brother would be good for that too. This is the counter tack too. I always have to read the blades of these cold steels. They all have uh, very similar names and they all have tack in them. Go figure. Okay, next up, a defensive favorite and a low profile favorite, except I bulked up the profile uh, aftermarket, but that's the Copus Designs Elvia. Uh, and this is a collaboration with Ed Calderon uh, based on his Elvia knife. Elvia, his mother, uh, carried around a fruit knife with her. All, all the time. So when Ed Cal high stakes law enforcement on the Mexican border, he, among many other weapons, carried a little fruit knife. And uh, well, there you go. That's what this is based on. I'll show it in the sheath first, because this is one of those sheaths that you can just drop in the pocket without a clip or without a cord or anything. And it can ride around loose in your pocket so it's undetectable. But that little hook is there so that when you grab it out of your pocket, you can hook this on the side of your pocket and unsheath your knife and have a knife in hand, but have it all um, low profile. In this case, uh, I have the Ulti clip on this one, and this rides very nicely in the appendix, uh, appendix carry right side. You've got that curved handle to match my curved belly and then a relatively short sheath. So it's not going to gouge painfully anywhere. Um, and then this one, as I mentioned, was very low profile, but I had it uh, Sukamaki wrapped by um, Josh Mason of Bright for War Knives. Um, so that's purple ray skin, beautiful purple ray skin, and then black, uh, that black Japanese in the waistband. Uh, you, can, you can pull this out and have it in reverse grip immediately. Uh, you can also do the thing where you pull it out, knuckle against your body, and have it uh, oriented with edge up, tip up like this, just in case you need to do a sort of pull cut uh, that, um, what's his name, Douglas, uh, can't remember his name, but uh, the guy who invented the clinch pick was talking about how he keeps it, would keep it in his waistband. Uh, during, uh, you know, undercover drug deals in cars, which just sounds like a terrifying thing. Uh, but if it's over, he would have it oriented like this, pull it out and have the tip be able to, or the, the edge in and be able to uh, delve that way in that close quarter. So appendix works great uh, either way for this uh, package here. All right, next up, I'm going to sheathe this Dane 154. Uh, hook. Next up, similar comp. Uh, this is from Bastinelli Creations and Dark. And yes, this one I do uh, for it kind of sagging, uh, as you can imagine. I just haven't been able to figure out how to how to rig it so that it's uh, more horizontal. It always ends up like this. Uh, but it's still comfortable because it's so light and so thin and and rent. And this is the anomaly here. I'm going to I'm going to go to the main camera for a second and show you how I like it. Uh, usually it's like this. Yeah. It's on the belt like this and it, it ends up drooping like this. But all you do is put your your finger through the ring. and tug it out and you've got this and um 
Bastinelli Creations, it is very, uh, very well set up with that ring um, positioned so that when you make a fist, uh, it doesn't pull your finger, or your knuckles out of alignment. Uh, so you've got that horrifying uh, sort of cat's claw blade there uh, for that that clawing motion. Again, that Pical style thing is all about this here. I'll show you here. You have that hook and you've got that blade reaching out with the tip. And in, in a gross motor situation, you're just doing that and it's taking advantage of that hooking motion, that arcing motion. Uh, so this one is really nice for uh, front scout style, uh, even though it droops down. And I will figure out a way, you know, with the with cord and using the different loops in such a way, but um, I just haven't quite figured it out yet. Next up, this one is, uh, this is the a custom cave bear by Dirk Pinkerton. And this one fits great. Uh, if you look at the, the contour of the kydex there that fits right into that curve where your leg meets your body perfectly uh, when you're sitting down uh, all of these knives have to be good sitting down because unfortunately that's a big part of my day uh, so um, on occasion i'll get tired of of having them there and i will take the knife out uh, but on the whole i like to leave it on me and most of the time i forget about them this one big as it is it's probably the biggest in terms of um it it's overall um what do you call it uh, uh footprint uh it is quite comfortable and so this is the cave bear you've seen this before uh you got the happy ronald mcdonald handle with the devastating and beautifully ground uh double-edged curved blade here pical day uh, pical style all day long but if you turn it around like this has sort of a Middle Eastern flair with that double-edged curved uh, knife. Just a beauty, just a beauty. And one you want to have on you, no doubt, if uh, if it hits the fan and uh, it's a knife kind of situation. Um, that was one of the sillier things I've said, but it is true. Yeah, I am not incorrect. Um, I love really like the practical thing I get out of this is it is a work of art to me. It It is perfect grinds. It is a, a hand that is a, a perfect uh, hand at the grinder and an amazing eye at the design table. So love Dirk Pinkerton's work. And this is among my favorite. So happy I can carry it appendix style. Okay, last up, this one has been getting a lot of appendix carry. Uh, gets a lot of carry anyway, but it works perfectly. It is flat. It is thin. It is large. It is capable. Large-ish. Uh, this is the Kramer Custom Knives Voodoo. Uh, it's got a perfect sheath. Man, I, I was just thinking, I need more Kramer Custom Knives in my life. Uh, this is double-edged, upswept clip point, I'll call it. He calls it a Persian. Who are you going to believe? The maker or your lying eyes. Uh, I had him sharpen the swedge. It is a very obtuse, splitting, gouging, tearing kind of edge. And then the main edge is a very thin, hollow ground, slicey edge. A great, great self-defense blade is this, but also practical. That's 154 cm blades to feel next to the body. Uh, during the summer in appendix carry, it's not going to rust uh too readily i'll have to be sure i take care of it uh not sure if i sweat more appendix style or not but uh gonna have to gauge that uh, my fixed blade carry does wane a little bit during the summer months uh, but with some of these real light ones uh i, I just might stick with it <clears throat> all right well that has been it from the uh from probably the two very best our book ending this list, and that is the Hogtooth Knives EDC Tonto and the Voodoo uh, by Kramer Custom Knives, both just outstanding for carry. And uh, as is the Nova One, look for the Nova Two in the future. Um, but anyway, what do you like to carry? Fixed blade EDC. Uh, do you fixed blade carry EDC? I feel like things are headed that direction ever more hardcore with every passing day. So don't miss the train. Get yourself an EDC fixed blade. Um, 
from Bradford to a custom, whatever it is. Kershaw makes some cool ones. They all make cool ones. Try it out. It's awesome carrying a fixed blade knife. All right. That's it for me. Uh, be sure to join us on uh, Sunday for Jacklings of Shed Knives. Very interesting interview with a, a young entrepreneur and knife maker. Uh, has some interesting processes you want to check out. And, uh, and then also join us for Thursday Night Knives tomorrow night when we randomly give away this QSP Locust. A very, very cool knife. Uh, also, you can join us on Patreon by scanning the QR code on your screen or going to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.